Juwan Howard. And uh, I'm going to be me. So, you know, a small thing. I've never sat down during a game. So there'll be a chair there, but it will be for him. It will not be for me. Uh, uh, and I told the players that yesterday, that I'm not, I'm not replacing Juwan Howard. And, uh, but what we have in place is the way that we're going to play. The, uh, look, the guy is a mastermind with ATOs and uh, it, it, it has blown my mind for three years. Like, I don't know that he's repeated an ATO in any of these games for three years. That's not who I am. So uh, we're gonna have a, a way that we're going to approach our timeouts. We're gonna come out of timeouts organized. We're gonna come out of timeouts with a, uh, a pattern. I'm gonna run the timeout the way that I run it. And it just, it's, but I'm not, I'm not going to mimic him, um, and I didn't mimic him yesterday in, in practice, and will not t uh, today. So, was, was Juwan able to address the team at all yesterday before this all kind of came down? And if so, what kind of what was the message? Uh, no, or, no, no, he 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 did not, and uh, he addressed everybody in the program. Uh, twice late Sunday night via text and just it, it, that was a, a family text if then also logistically I guess what changes you know between scouts and um, recruiting some of those other things how are you guys divvying up any differently or um, no this is my scout Rutgers is my scout and then Illinois Howard or Saudi, Chris Hunter will move up. Uh, Chris Hunter was on the floor yesterday for practice. He he dealt with the bigs, uh, and that's terrific. A terrific teacher there. Uh, scouts stay the same. Um, the, uh, Howard Isley is going to be the offensive coordinator, right? It's he and Jawan that have put together this. Uh, really effective and massive playbook. So you'll see Howard Isley uh, get up, he'll make a call, and then he'll sit down. We're not engaging with referee. He's not, you know, he's not over coaching. And uh, I, I need to make sure that the referees know that. You know, like, sometimes they want, oh, it's, you know, all that. Any of these referees that have the time to tell the kids to sit down during a basketball game, they're not doing, you know, like they're not paying attention to what's going on. Like, we got these guys. You take those ten guys. Uh, so how, you'll see Howard uh, making calls, and then even during timeouts, he'll give me the call that we're going to go out on the uh, out of the timeout with. Would, would, will you be able to have any? Verbal contact with Juwan at all through any of this? Yes, Juwan's my friend. Okay, so it's it's not like you can Zoom, text. Juwan is my friend. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, I, I feel I feel uh, tremendously responsible to my friends to make sure that they're doing well. Juwan is very remorseful, and uh, uh, today is a little better than yesterday. Did Juwan address the, or did he apologize post game Sunday? And what did he say to the players? He did not speak to the players on on Sunday. It was a very heartfelt text exchange very late in the night on Sunday. Bill, could you speak to the uh, program's reaction to the punishment? Obviously, a couple of players suspended and 
Well, uh, yeah, I, I think like not like the individual guys specifically. First of all, Ward Manuel did a fabulous job laying it out uh, for the players and for the staff. And I think that all of us would, Andrew would say the same thing. Escalations like that have no place in the game. Okay? And, and everybody involved, everybody, not, not the three people suspended or not just our players, everybody involved has now learned a hard lesson. And uh, you know, we're, we're we are all collectively we are all collectively remorseful for missed opportunities. I raise my hand. Jalan went one way in the shakeout, and I didn't think to go with him. Chris Hunter feels the same. We, we, everybody everybody learned a hard lesson, and you know what? Um, to play basketball. Bill, you've experienced a lot in basketball. Have you ever been part of a situation like this? And, and what experiences do you draw on to navigate this time? That, that's a really interesting question uh, because I was I was racking my brain uh, to to what would this be comparable to and. Uh, I really don't have one. Actually, this morning when I was daydreaming, I was like, well, is this like USA basketball where you're gathering these guys for a short period of time? Now, obviously, I've been in, engaged with these guys for three years, but it's a, it's a short period of time. What, what is it that you want to, for them to value? Um, and that was the only, but, but, there is there is nothing that I that I came with, and, and I I was like, well, you know, maybe I should call, you know, pick a guy. Do I call the guy at Louisville, Mike Begeese, who's a friend of mine? But come on, I I know this, I know this wholeheartedly, without like poking my chest out. I can run a practice, and I can manage a game, right? And some would say that I can do this. I can talk. It might not always make sense, but I can talk. Uh, so um, I think that, that forward together, that's what this has to be, forward together. And I'm, and I'm a part of it. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm no more or less a part of it than Howard Isley or Saudi Washington or Eli. We're, we're doing this together moving forward. I have a question. Yes. You said everyone learned a lesson. Was there a teaching moment where you sat the team down and said, you know, this can't happen, this is why? Was it a, a lesson learned uh, with the players? Ward, Ward Manuel. Ward Manuel, he, he gave a, uh, like I'm not that savvy with all the stuff that's going on in, in you know the way they teach, but he gave a master class in uh, what was learned. So he deserves the credit, Ward Manuel. Could you elaborate a little bit on what he said? Yeah, that that situations like that in in, in all walks of life. There are moments when you, and when that happens, you can go one way or you can go the other. And everybody, everybody went in the wrong direction on this one. So, you know, whatever, it, whatever needs to happen when this happens, let's, let's each grow from it. Sorry, I'm late. Layton, go ahead. As far as basketball with the two guys out, I guess, what do you expect out of Brandon, Jace, Jaron, you know, some of the front court guys on uh, tomorrow night? Uh, I expect them to be the very best they can be. So I don't, I, I don't think, like, 
it's similar that they're in, I'm in a similar role to, to them, right? Like, I'm not Juwan Howard, right? I am not. And their Brandon Johns is not Musa. So be the best Brandon Johns. Right? And, and be able to, to walk out of here tomorrow night and say that that was as good as I could get. And guess what? Take Thursday off and come back Friday and be better than you were on Wednesday. But you, you can't come up with a game plan and say, well, Musa averages 8.1. How are we going to get 8.1? No, that's not going to work. But if Brandon Johns walks in here tomorrow night with his head up, his mind clear, and heart knowing that we need the best Brandon Johns in order to beat Rutgers, then that'll be good enough. And that's the message to, to all of the guys, to, to every guy. And, you know, a little inside baseball. What Terrence Williams and Musa Diabate are doing is they're being the best them. And how are they doing that? Those two kids who are rotation players are playing scout team. Yesterday's practice and today's practice. And they did it with joy in their heart. That was, that was uplifting to see yesterday. You, uh, you mentioned that you wanted your players to be able to take something of value uh, from these five games. What, what is that? What, what is that? Well, I've always been big on, on uh, I, I, and I don't mean this in a smart way, a, a smart aleck way in any, we have, we have, we have on a schedule five, five days. We really, five games, we have one day. So at the end of today, when we finish practice at six o'clock, I want them to know that they got better and that we got better. And then tomorrow to repeat it, get better. So daily improvement. You've all heard Juwan talk about the 1%. That's what this is about. This isn't about, well, this is gonna be a really successful uh, enterprise if we go five and out, but it's gonna be a disaster if we go one and four. No, how, how, how would I know? Like. What I want to do today is everybody, every coach, every support staff person, every manager, every player to walk out of here and say, you know what, I got better. And if we do that, good things will happen. Okay, Andrew. Andrew? I mean, you guys are you know, competing for an NCAA tournament. Uh, like, is that, is that factor in at all to how you're kind of approaching this? Or? It doesn't weigh. It doesn't weigh on me, uh, and it, it's it's not something that uh, you hear the play. I'm sh look, the players have to be, be aware of it. Um, but the only thing that we can control is this idea of improvement, right? We 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 have to play better. We have to play better against Rutgers than we did at the rack. We have to play better against Rutgers than we did at Wisconsin. We have to be better in practice today than we were yesterday. Everything else will, you know, th those, are, those are rewards. These are um, our responsibilities today. Okay. You know, situations like these can go a variety of ways and you never really know. Is it do you view it as an opportunity almost to be galvanized to a certain degree with um, together as a team? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I would say it this way. The only way we can move forward is together, right? If we move forward and this guy makes a left and I make a right, well, then we didn't move forward. Maybe these three people move forward. So to me, uh, here's the power, right? Like in, in this hand, if I have an open hand, not a lot of power that can be generated. But here, power can be generated. So let's move powerfully forward. Not just, well, uh, Let's get Tuesday out of the way. So I, I don't know 
about galvanizing, and, but I do know this, that it's clear to all of us, to everybody involved, that we're only doing this together. And to be honest with you, if we fail, we fail together. Let's go back over to Andrew. Sunday's post game has kind of ignited a, a national debate on the handshake line. I was wondering if uh, I'd be interested in hearing if you have a, a thought on it, whether they're still useful or get rid of them, alter them. Or... Do not get rid of them. We cannot give in. We cannot give in. Come on. It, it, it's, a, it's a healthy competition. And in healthy competition, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So there's salesmen all over Michigan. They're going to go into a, a company today. They're either going to get the sale or they're not going to get the sale. But I'm not going to shake hands and say thank you for this opportunity. So, look, this is, about, this is about more than basketball. It's about teaching young people lessons. And not just the young people that are playing the game, right? All the young people that watched, all the young people that support these teams, right? Man up, man up, right? John? The three-point shooting obviously the last few games hasn't hasn't been there, the open looks, certainly. Is there a rhyme or reason to it for you? Have you been around the team that maybe was this erratic? We've certainly seen some games where they were well. Uh, I don't really know the rhyme or the reason. Um, it, it's just amazing. And and uh, some of these student managers are, are fascinating to me. The, I'm sure it was the other night, Two of the kids were having a conversation at another table, and they turned around to me and said, Coach, do you know that we've never won a game where we shot higher than 25% or less than 41%? My first reaction was, you need a hobby. Like, you need to do something that's different than this. Uh, and, and then I, but then when I, I was, uh, at shoot around that night, Steve Lapis, who's a really good friend and was doing the game for CBS, he told me, he said the same thing. And I said, I don't, I don't have a reason. I mean, it's not, we take a lot of shots. We practice a lot of shots. Uh, we take game shots. No team that I've been involved with here has guys that come in and get more shots. Um, I just, a game shot is different than a than you know shooting one in the PDC at eight in the morning, and um, I just want our guys to shoot it and concentrate on the next shot. Not worry about the last shot. Not worry about the, st the statistics, and think that the ball is going in. Are the young guys able to do that yet? Do you think? No, yeah. no, no. But they're growing. They're they're all growing and and. Uh, Hopefully tomorrow night it, I know actually, hopefully it starts today. Awesome.